disrespectful. When I say How are you? How's everything? Junction. Right. If you break it, we're coming at you hard. Right, right. right. It's just so nice. Because he's fairly aggressive. Uh, you gotta give 
of a ringer. Is she the one with the black dress? Basically, I've been walking for years. 26 plus miles in the first day. You know, I'm deferring to you, Judge. Did you hear what he said? No, not. Some original music. 
uh, every year, I'm awed by the talent uh, and the hard work that this cast brings to the show, and this year it's no different. Uh, it's a, a pleasure working with everyone here, uh, as uh, all of us in our show are grateful to the City Bar Association uh, for their uh, being a friend and supporter <coughs> of the 12 Nights. They've been going on since the 50s, and we're, we're happy to be continuing that tradition today, honoring Corporation Council. I know Harrison Roy. But I was there back in the days of uh, Bernie Blunton. <laughs> so, okay, so welcome. It is my pleasure. Thank you, City Bar Association, for the wonderful facilities and for giving me such a wonderful Peter, evening. Nick Ladies and gentlemen, let Peter, me. Peter, you pardon me, pardon me, when you're thanking the City Bar, Nick Marico. Let oh. me thank Nick Marico. Knows that there's a tremendous support system here. Now it is my honor to introduce the president of this association, Deborah Raskin. Welcome. Um, I'm delighted to see you all here. Um, for more than half a century, the entertainment committee of the City Bar has held these 12th night facility festivities. I can do this. <laughs> I don't want to know their lines, not me. Um, and we've honored New Yorkers, New York lawyers of all stripes, mayors, governors, uh, corporation councils, so from very humble be beginnings. And tonight we have the honor of honoring Peter Zimrock, uh, who's a real star, as you all know. I'm with the show. All right, cast, make sure you watch yourselves tonight, all right? Uh, this Zimrock fellow, whoever he is, is apparently some uh, revered uh, presence in the legal community. So let's keep it respectful, all right? This isn't the Catskills. <laughs>
to it. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to thank all of you for coming here tonight. I really don't deserve this honor, but I have a bad back. I don't deserve that either. <laughs> I love this city and I've loved serving it. I've been in many offices of public service. I've been a prosecutor, a defense lawyer, a teacher, and an administrator. And I believe that law should be used as an instrument of social good. That's why I became a lawyer, and I think I'm a very good lawyer. That's why I find it particularly unnerving that I'm remembered mostly for being a celebrity spouse. <laughs> sure, I love Estelle. Who wouldn't? But I'm a person, too. I'm tired of, being, tired of being treated like an extra in one of her movies or plays. <laughs> so let me tell you, I was born in Brooklyn, uh, the son of Saul and Ruth Zimroff, but I was raised mostly, mostly by my grandparents, and they spoke only Yiddish. So until I was age five, I barely spoke any English. You could say I was a, a, you know, spoiled because I was a firstborn son. And you know, my grandpa, in addition to speaking no English, also knew nothing about the Brooklyn Dodgers, yet, he would take you to Evans Field to watch their games. So I once said to him, Sadie, you don't know anything about baseball. Why do you keep on taking me here? You know what he said to me? He said, because I'm here to support Jackie Robinson. <laughs> See, how could I go wrong? <laughs> hey, hold it, hold it. OK, this is a nine big shot, big whoops, and is in, mazel tov, <laughs> But if you go on at this rate, They'll be gone before you get to junior high school. You let us uh, work through the uh, street kid up from Brooklyn stuff. We'll move this thing along. <laughs>
called upon a number of legal heavyweights for advice. I am Constance Baker Motley. In the summer of 1964, Peter worked for Jack Greenberg and me at the NAACP, and he was a law student at Yale. We took Lester Maddox to court to desegregate his Pickard restaurant in Georgia. Maddox had brought Worcestershire sauce from Massachusetts, thereby giving us an interesting conversation. <laughs> Peter was a brilliant young lawyer and intern in the middle of it all. Peter, come back and work for the NAACP. You could make a great difference. Wouldn't you agree, Dean McKay? Yes, Judge Motley, that was historic. But training the minds of law students is where Peter should put his considerable talents. We want him on the faculty at NYU Law School. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> I am head of one of the largest and oldest line firms in New York City, with a well-deserved reputation for being uptight. <laughs> there is no substitute for the challenges of big cases. And when I say big cases, I mean big money. That's where Peter's future lies. So many, many choices. <laughs> Discrimination of the poor non-whites. Do right. Do right. Take action that will ignite. Make use of your legal might. Do right. Do right. Give your career some steam. Come to Academe. Ivory Tower living is a dream. Teach law. Teach law. Who cares that your class is bored? Your tenure will be assured. Teach law. Teach law. For a career long term, just join a white shoe firm. We'll show you how to make the dollars churn. Big firm. Big firm. You'll always have dough to burn. Just think of what you could earn. Big firm, big firm. Concern for others' rights, ensure for civil rights. Do work that always makes your heart take flight. Do right, do right. Take action that will ignite. Make use of the legal might. Do right, do right. Teaching for right, do right. Teaching the students. Its own reward. None of our props has ever shown the door. Teach law, teach law. Who cares that the class is bored? Your tenure will be assured. Teach law, teach law. Here in a white shoe firm, money is no concern. Manhattan. 
There was once such a courageous man, one courageous enough to scream out that something was rotten in the state of the police department. You may ask, what would motivate such a loyal officer to bear witness against his brethren in arms? That, I can tell you in one word, corruption. in the system. My revelations meant led Mayor John Lindsay to appoint the Knapp Commission and to subsequent reforms. Uh, they also earned an Oscar nomination for Al Pacino, who famously portrayed the whistleblower who followed my lead, Frank Serpico, who would later take all the credit, but I digress. <laughs> the point is, who represented David Dirk as he boldly provided evidence of widespread corruption? Why, None other than noted civil rights attorney and do-gooder, Peter Zimron. Once there was a cop who said that things were broken, vocal and outspoken, conscience was awoken. There was a man whose passion was unleashed. He fought until misconduct ceased. It's blatant, he cried. It's blatant, corruption. Estelle? You want to meet Estelle Parsons? I do. 
Well, I know her pretty well. She's a force of nature, acting, directing, writing. She does it all. Sure, I can introduce you. All right, but listen, I don't want to come off like some crazed theatrical groupie. It's got to be natural. Uh, <laughs> any ideas? Sure. Uh, Estelle's making a movie in the village with Zero Mostel. The title is Warplay. She's playing a barmaid in a saloon in Greenwich Village. A barmaid? So it's not Shakespeare. But I can get your job as an extra in the bar scene. No lines, but plenty of opportunity to sidle up and speak to her. Uh, what the hell? It sounds like fun. I don't think anything will ever come of it, but at least we'll be able to say hello when we see one another in the elevator. Great. You got the job. Be at the West Village Bar at 10 a.m. on Monday. Read, read. 
founder, Bob Morgenthau. Morgenthau had been Peter's boss at the U.S. Attorney's Office. Another alum from that office and former colleague here with Peter, Pierre Laval, was the chief assistant district attorney about the same time. When Judge Laval was appointed to the Southern District in 1977, Peter took his position. But by 1980, <clears throat> Peter was at another career crossroads. Hi, Pierre. Uh, nice looking chambers. I see you're making your mark as a fine judge. Thanks, Peter. And how are you doing riding herd over crime in Manhattan? It's been almost three years that you've been number two in the office. Well, uh, it's been going well enough, but I, I think I'm ready for a change. Back to che teaching at NYU? You know, I really do love teaching, but I've been thinking about trying cases. How about private practice? Well, you know, I have an offer from Castellanos and Ritholz. It's a boutique firm. I can do commercial litigation, white collar, and I could really try some challenging cases there. Sounds like you're on the right track. Spend their careers drafting contracts for finances. That's perfect for some lawyers who don't enter the fray. Some lawyers prefer to be miles away from a live jury. That's PG for some lawyers who read pieces all day.
An official of the Parking Violations Bureau pled guilty to racketeering and fraud in connection with an extortion scheme involving the Parking Violations Bureau. All, all right, all right, it was a bad year. <laughs> so how can you bring about change? We have to change the way that money skews the political process. There's no laws about the limits on campaign spending and contributions. Therefore, enormous sums of money need to be spent and enormous sums of money need to be raised. So what's the solution? The solution is a system that ties public financing to voluntary uh, limitations on expenditures and contributions. We'd never get that through Albany. You don't need to. Just get it through city council. The city council? What planet do you live on? You're a partner in a law firm. What do you know of life? Leave the city council to me. Do I have the job? Of course you have the job. You couldn't be more perfect. You have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> Suing the city from homeless shelter living, the summary districting, you'll be facing lots of misery. Oh, Corporation Council, you're always on call. Floods of Staten Island fighting in City Hall. The teachers are striking, the D train is stuck. Muck rakers out there raking muck, raking muck, raking muck, raking muck, making all the stuff. The under piles of unplowed snow. <laughs> oh, Corporation Council, hear all their grievances. Every day a mouthful from all these geniuses. The rats you should be killing, the potholes you should fill. But city councils holding up the bill. Dear Corporation Council, go clean up this mess. For our ways a hassle, city islands depressed. Subways are regressing, run worse than the Mets. Please put an end to our distress. Our distress, our distress, our distress. Our distress. Our distress. Our distress. Our distress. Our distress. Who's so many wrongs you must address? Excessive campaign funding and they won't plow our streets. The homeless sleep in centers cause shelters overflow. Whoa, the city is running out of dough. Oh, corporation council, do something quick. Improve education in the poorest districts. The budget's unbalanced, challenges rise. Children are being left behind. Left behind. are protesting. There's outrage in the air. Goodness gracious, Peter, this ain't fair. We're corporation council. We're really full of housing problems, mounting pension funds overdrawn. We need an achiever who always comes through. Hey, Peter Zimroth. Ago, 
I never would have considered a merger of our two companies. <laughs> That's one of the benefits of this club. You get to meet all the movers and the shakers, you know, the right people. <laughs> it doesn't take much in our congenial setting to put a nice business piece together. Hi, guys. I got news. Remember that ordinance passed by the city council back in 84 trying to force private clubs to admit Women? How could I forget? It's about us! The clubs have been fighting that ordinance since it passed. Well, that fight is about to end, <laughs> one way or the other. It's going to the Supreme Court this term, and that guy Zimroth is going to argue it. It would change everything. No more nude swimming, sexist jokes, spacious locker rooms. Our dudes are going to go sky high. I hear this guy Zimroth is very impassioned over the issue. Some members are even out shopping for bathing suits. <laughs> <laughs> Look outside. Women protesters. This Bella Epson, Gloria Steinemann, bathing oh, for dead. <laughs> Let's go burn their support bras. Now, gentlemen, we are 50% of the electorate, and a lot more if you count the people that actually go and vote. And yet, we still don't have equal place in the work. So you, you want equal pay for equal work? You've already got that in this city. What more do you want? Do you know why men are always the one who make the big deals? No, I suppose you're going to tell me. Yes, I am going to tell you. It's because they have the privilege of going to the men's clubs and meeting with all the power brokers, playing squash play cards, and landing the big deals. But listen, private club members should have the right to associate with anybody they want to. That's human nature. Yeah, but it's not constitutional. Times are changing, fellas. Get used to it. <laughs>
has to be put on the fence fan litigation, which has been going on for, like, what? Since 1997? Do you, what's the current status? Well, Zimroth was hired by Wyatt, a big drug company, to defend it from thousands and thousands of claims brought by people claiming to be injured by a diet drug that is supposed to cause heart damage. The claims were completely out of control and threatening to overwhelm the company when they turned to Peter. Oh, and I heard that he was able to work out a settlement that saved the company. Correct. What we're working on now is implementing that settlement according to its terms. Peter believes that thousands of bogus claims have been brought by lawyers working hand in hand with cardiologists around the country. Zimroff has hundreds of lawyers around the country working on it for years now. Now, is there any truth about these bogus claims? It's inevitable, and it's our job to find them. Hey, here's 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 Carrie Arnold, one of the partners working with Peter on the litigation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you all about it. There was a drug <laughs> called Planfluramine, a drug that became <coughs> a diet craze. But there was a side effect, it caused many heart valve defects. And Oh, 
What swelling offices? Yeah, look at the view. Yeah, it reminds me of what George Kaufman said when he first saw Moss Hart's house. This is what God would have designed if he had had the money. <laughs> I, I don't know much about this Zimrock bird we're supposed to interview, except he's married to some famous actress. A federal judge appointed him as monitor to work with the NYPD <coughs> because of issues over their stop and frisk tactics. I am. I, I cover the entertainment beat for the Daily Forward. <laughs> My readers could get less of a whoop about court appointments. Oh, they'll be interested in this. The case was a class action bought on behalf of hundreds of thousands of young black and Latino New Yorkers. The district court judge decided in their favor, ruling that the stop and frisk tactics were systematically violating their constitutional rights. So that's why I've never heard of him before. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. He got a lot of ink when he was Koch's corporation counsel. City stop lawyer, huh? Did he do anything memorable? He stopped Staten Island from seceding. <laughs> and that's a good thing. <laughs> I was asked to interview him because his monitorship has just gotten underway. Now that the appeals are finished. Come to think of it, you know, I remember this stop and frisk thing coming up during the mayoral campaign, except I don't remember what the Blasio was on. You know, I, 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 I wish I knew more about what you're talking about. Hey, here comes a lawyer from the Center for Constitutional Rights. <laughs> they represented the plaintiffs in the stop and frisk case. I bet you can tell us all about their claim. Sure, I'd be happy to, with a little help from Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Stop having 
counsel's office who tried this case for the city have a very different view. We're proud of the NYPD's record of law enforcement. Murders and other major crimes are down to levels not seen in decades, and our stop and frisk policy has had a lot to do with it. But you have to admit that stop and frisk is not enforced equally in all neighborhoods. Well, what do you expect? We target high crime neighborhoods and high crime uh, <coughs> populations. <laughs> but anyway, our police protect the perks of citizens in those neighborhoods, and they're trained to do it with respect and restraint. But hey, I'm just a lawyer. Why listen to me? Why don't we hear from one of our real police officers who can tell you what's actually going on out there in the streets? Well, the team, 
the Tea Party went ballistic. And then the mayor and the town council and the town uh, building group and the planning group rushed through their uh, zoning changes to prevent a house of worship from being a permitted use of the uh, in property. This isn't about zoning law. It's about religious freedom. Oh, boy, you fit in right, right in with our group. <laughs> Here comes Peter now. He can give you all the details. Among the cases that I've been faced with, one stands out above the rest. Issues putting me to the test to do my best. To impress, I hate regaling you with my failing, so I'll speak only of success. I once was puzzling to help some Muslims. This is how I did it. I must confess. There's a mosque, <laughs> the Al Fala Center, by decree. We're clogging on a reason. 
Yes, I'm working as the monitor. And there's one thing of which you can be sure. I'll be there any doubts I'll lay. Yes, I'm working as the monitor.
vicious calumnies, all of it. <laughs> As master of rebels, it is my bounden duty to defend my client, Richard Grimsoff, uh, uh, married to Stel Parsons, what's his name? <laughs> I shall discharge that duty, no matter how difficult or impossible it may be. Gather around me, friends, come as close as you can. I tell you the story of a great ball man. So silence your phones, don't sneeze, don't cough. The name of that ball man is Peter Zimmer. Yes, Peter it is. Peter Z, finest lawman you'll ever see. I better get moving because my hair is thinning and I have to start the story right at the beginning. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines, with 12 little girls. <laughs> fancy nor fine, lived a fine Jewish couple who worked hard for their dime. But the dimes they saved, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. But the dimes they saved, they sipped their broth. The name on the door was Saul Zimroff. She was Ruth and he was Saul, but you better believe it, that wasn't all. The pride of their lives made their hearts beat fleeter was a darling boy by the name of Peter. He was not afraid of mice. He loved thunder, snow, and ice. To the tiger in the zoo, Peter bravely said, poo poo. Peter was so brave and fine. If a girl, they'd have named her Madeline. But when they perceived his masculine stock, they decided to name him after the rock. So Peter it was. It was Peter Z, finest lawman you'll ever see. The triumphs of his early years were as good as they can get. A woodshop prize for a toy boat that sank. <laughs> and he learned the minuet. Dancing to Mozart's musics with its curly cues and swirls was a joy with one qualification. He hated to dance with girls. <laughs> like any good lad from Brooklyn where the Dodgers ruled the day, the saddest day in Peter's life was the day they moved away. That boy became a catcher, covered the plate like a dream. And I'll let you in on a little known fact made the Little League All-Star team. This Brooklyn, this Brooklyn boy loved baseball, a dyed wool Dodger fan. The reason why wasn't hard to find. Jackie Robinson was his man. He listened to games with his grandpa, who knew nothing about the game, but the bravery of that rookie set the old man's heart aflame. What Peter learned from that old man he was only six. You must stand up against evil, or the world will be in a fix. If there's one thing that still fills Peter today with anger and indignation, it's the insidious evil that poisons the world. I mean, discrimination. From the day of his birth in Brooklyn town, this baby was headed for cap and gown, but other tots struggled with how to say howdy. Peter was preparing for summa cum laude. <laughs> this Peter was as smart a lad as one has ever seen. So they sent him off to college when he was but 16. Of his time at the great Yale Law School, I'll be mercifully brief. The folks at the Yale Law Journal made him editor-in-chief. <laughs> then Peter 
winter the low mill went to clerk for Fortis J. And the justice kept his nosy clean until Peter went away. <laughs> yes, Peter it was. It was Peter Z, a finer lawman I never did see. Then they summoned Peter to teach in the law school at NYU. The youngest ever tenured there. He made it at 32. A young star needs a great mentor for a fiddler, a Menuhin, or Heifetz. Peter learned first from Bob Bordenthal, then from Boris Kostelanitz. They say a man without a woman is like a ship without a sail, like a lawyer without a client, or a hammer without a nail. And so, despite great mentors, paradise was not so swell, till one day in the elevator, he found that great lady Estelle. <laughs> Notwithstanding their honors and Oscars, there was something more they craved. Then in answer to their prayers came a glorious babe named Abe. Estelle and Abe and Peter have traveled throughout the world. I'm not talking luxury cruises, but adventures that make your hair curl. On the peaks high above Machu Picchu, Peter climbed near to the sky and cavorted with bulls in Pamplona. But for God's sake, don't ask me why. <laughs> As a knight in the lists of the law, he won victories too numerous to tell. I'll speak about just a couple or I take till they freeze over hell. His most heinous criminal client won a sentence of no carceration. How did Peter achieve that amazing result? The client was a corporation. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Koch made Peter court counsel for the great city of New York, and there he made major triumphs, of which I plan to talk. He crafted New York's model law for the financing of campaigns. Matching funds gave financial influence to the little guys and dames. The poobahs of the liberal establishment detested discrimination, but they kept all the women out of their clubs. They called it freedom of association. Peter went straight to the high court. He would not play that game, and he convinced the justices to call it by its ugly name. So now in the clubs, the women come and go, talking of Matisse and of Merkel and Merlot. <laughs> this came from the lesson he learned from his gramps when Peter was only six. You must stand up against evil or the world will be in a fix. So you who toil by the midnight oil with the weasley words of law aren't likely to find a lawman as kind and as clever as Peter Zimroth. In law, there's an expression, no situr a sokis. It means you can know a word or a man by the company it keeps. This teaches us much about Peter. There's a lot that we can tell from the fact that Peter has hitched his star to the talented Estelle, on top of the fact that he shares his life with that fabulous queen of the drama. Remember, too, that they gave him a prize to be shared with the Dalai Lama. <laughs> yes, Peter it is. It's Peter Z, a finer law man you ain't never going to see.
touching. Um, um, the, the last time I was so moved by, uh, by a tribute was in 1968. At my, no, it was my 20th Yale Law School reunion when I was voted the classmate uh, with the most improved personality. <laughs> Too. <laughs> never mind, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the laughter. Uh, it's very hard for lawyers uh, uh, to get laughs. <laughs> Except for judges, they are funny all the time. <laughs> and, and the litigators in this group know exactly what. what uh, uh, tell the truth, how many litigators are here who uh, have, have laughed at lame jokes by judges? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> so, um, you may have heard uh, who I'm married to, but anyway, my, my amazing, wonderful, talented wife is here tonight, extraordinary as always in the Herculean role. Uh, she has been playing since we got married, pretending to be entertained by a group of lawyers. <laughs> you know, Estelle has always been a favorite uh, of uh, national network comic, comics like uh, Johnny Carson. You may not know this, but if you don't mind, from Yiddish here, so I'm going to say Kvel, right? Kvel is now Estelle. She was a pioneer in television. She was a real pioneer. She worked on the creation of the Today Show before it was on the air. She was the first woman uh, political reporter on national TV and so forth. But that's not the reason why Estelle is a favorite. It's because uh, you never know what's going to come out of her. <laughs> so here is Estelle on lawyers and on national TV. Well, Estelle, I understand you are married to a younger man. What's that like? Younger man? My husband is a lawyer. Lawyers are old the day they get out of law school. <laughs> that, that was a very big ego booster, as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so now I want to talk to you about lust and passion. <laughs> In my life, I have lusted after only two things. Both uh, were depicted tonight more or less accurately, mostly less. <laughs> First was corporation counsel. I really wanted that job, and I pursued it with a single-minded passion. Uh, the second was Estelle. I mean, why else would I end up in a seedy bar in Greenwich Village as an extra in a soft-core sex comedy? <laughs> and the humiliation. Um, I need to take a, a very, very short detour here before I finish that story, because I was told that because of some unfortunate comments at one of these events, the scripts now have to be vetted by the president of the association. <laughs> oh, who is, I, the lights are on, I think. Is Deborah here? Where's Deborah? No, right here. Where? Hi. Oh, Deborah, right. So I'm sorry I didn't uh, give you this script before, but I, I do. I have to. If you're here, I have to ask you this question. <laughs> Can I say screw in the in the big hall? <laughs> no, but we can go next door. What? No, I can't. We can I mean, I can. I can. I can. No, okay, no screw. It. Okay. <laughs> said no, but you can go next door. No, I don't want to. Go next door. Okay. I'm going to do it anyway. The movie that you heard about uh, tonight was a, a, a farce loosely based on Richard Nixon and his family. And the story was a gang of pornographers needed to boost their business. 
Uh, and uh, so the plot that they came up with was kidnapping uh, the daughter of the president, that would be Trisha Nixon, uh, and uh, the ransom price was that the president and the first lady had to screw on national television. <laughs> I mean, you know, really? this movie did not last very long. <laughs> But that, that was supposed to be what everyone, uh, to whet everybody's appetite for pornography. And Zero Mostel played uh, the president, and Stel uh, played the, uh, the first lady. And there was a scene, as you saw here tonight, in the bar, uh, being uh, uh, watching uh, the, on TV, on national television, this event. Uh, <laughs> so, I was an extra, as you've heard, and first, first shot, stop laughing, Martha. <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I was belly to the bar, and Estelle was uh, serving me, and in each succeeding scene, the director, who was Johnny Avildsen, who, as you may know, directed the Rocky movies, um, moved me a little further back, uh, and take after take after take, and by the time this, this uh, movie was actually came out, all you could see of me was... <laughs> but no matter, I took home the biggest prize of all, stale conditions from the craft services. <laughs> now, in truth, in truth, uh, our uh, bonding had less to do with my single-minded focus than that we were both very, very lazy. We live, as you heard, in the same apartment building on the Upper West Side. Neither of us wanted a relationship that required leaving the building. <laughs> okay, enough, enough. It's late. Uh, this has been a fabulous, fabulous night for me. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you to the cast. Thank you to the writers and the producers and the directors. And thank you to my friends and family for sharing this night with me.
I gotta get my coat. Okay. So, so I'll let you know. Hi, I'm your sister Alice. Nice to meet you. Oh no, they're Thanks for taking pictures. I like to catch all the but whatever. No, no, but she declines. This poor girl gets like all sorts of words. Okay, we're taking a person. Where are you going? More to come. I don't know. Why are you going to the. Very, very well. He was a real partner. And I called him. 
uh, but I haven't heard back. You know, I mentioned that you will be. Oh. He's at, still around? He's in the office. It was fabulous. The cast was terrific. I'll tell him. Are you a judge? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm in Florida until February 2nd. Okay, when are you leaving? I've been enjoying my ukulele playing. Oh, yes. Very much. What? I just want to leave you alone. That's okay. <laughs> It's good to get it. Fun is not the right word. I mean, I'm just really good at it. It's good to really get it. Yeah, I think he should have come to die and beat her ass. Yeah. 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 Yeah.